97.90 and 104.7 KFGO. Good afternoon and welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Michaels. Paulie Lines is our producer. You just heard Paul Jurgens, the KFGO News Center. We're back to Mr. Jurgens in about 20 minutes with KFGO News. Uh, before we jump into uh, talking with Beth Hill from the North Dakota Forest Service, I want to remind you, today is National Teacher Day. I heard one of the uh, coolest things uh, years ago, and it's uh, kind of stuck with me. And I'm uh, paraphrasing the saying, but it kind of goes like this. Um, nobody can remember who won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress three years ago. Nobody can remember who won runner-up in the NHL Championship six years ago. And nobody can remember this. Nobody can remember that. You know, as time goes by, the those things get put in our uh, past. But if you had to sit down and think about who your favorite teacher was, you never lose that. Nope. Somebody was profound and an influence on you. Maybe there were multiple people like that. Uh, I know everyone's had a teacher that has impacted their life, uh, probably way beyond school. And so it's National Teacher Day today. So salute to all teachers today. I had three in my family. I had three sisters that were all teachers. Uh, one just retired last year. Uh, so I would love to hear from you today on our text line. 35270, who was your favorite teacher? Mrs. Johnson, whoever it was, who was your favorite teacher? And if you could just tell a little blurb, she always did blank, or he always did this, or whatever. Uh, so who was your favorite teacher, and, you know, quick why, and, and where was it at? So love to hear from you today. 35270 on National Teacher Day. Who was your favorite teacher? With that, let's just switch gears. Boy, they've been having some trouble with wildfires out in western North Dakota. Uh, my wife... <clears throat> and some of her family went out to uh, uh, Western North Dakota over the weekend. She went to visit her mom, and they walked out into a field up there and uh, uh, picked up some uh, soil and put it down. They said it was like moon dust or something. It's so, so epically dry. And, of course, that goes along with fires uh, that are going on out there. Thousands and thousands of acres have been burned so far, and fires are still going on out there. I thought it would be important that we kind of get on the same page and get an update and so today, uh, I'm proud to introduce the Acting Outreach and Education Manager for the North Dakota Forest Service, Beth Hill. Welcome to KFGO, Beth. Thank you for having me. It's a distinct pleasure. Who is your favorite teacher, Beth? Ooh, it would be a toss-up between Mrs. Fry, my fourth grade teacher, and Mrs. Smallbeck, who was my Envirothon coach in high school. She really helped me to get into the career that I'm in now, so I owe a lot to both of them. That's cool. Isn't it interesting how you never forget your favorite teacher? Yes, exactly. I think I can name them all from kindergarten, even a bunch in college. So anyway, <laughs> Brown, if you have a favorite teacher, we'd love to hear from you, 35270. All right, so Beth Hill from the North Dakota Forest Service. Uh, first things first, let's talk about you. How did you get to the North Dakota Forest Service, Beth? What is your background? Where are you from? I am from Bismarck. Kind of. I was a, a military baby. We, my dad was in the Air Force. So we moved around a lot when I was younger. Uh, but we settled in Bismarck once he retired, and um, I really found a passion for natural resources and the environment through uh, my activities in high school, one of them being the Envirothon competition. Mm -hmm. um, I learned all about soils, and I loved it. And so I went off to NDSU and got my degree in soil science. I worked as a soil scientist for a number of years, um, helping farmers with uh, conservation assistance. Um, then I switched over to a job in extension for a little while, so more education and outreach in there. Sure. Um, and then that translated into uh, what I'm doing now with the Forest Service. Outstanding. So with all that work with soil, uh, uh, do you kind of – what are your thoughts on uh, – I had relatives that went up northwestern North Dakota over the weekend, went out into a field and said the soil was like moon dust. It's so dry. What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, we are experiencing a, a pretty severe drought over here in the western part of the state. It extends through almost the entirety of North Dakota. I know the southeastern part has been a little bit more fortunate and gotten some rain uh, that has uh, gotten down into our soil moisture. But for the most part, we are very dry, and um, I don't foresee much reprieve from that, unfortunately. But we are definitely, as North Dakotans, are a tenacious bunch Um we will find a way to make it through, but uh, it's just uh, a, a test in resiliency, and um, that translates to our wildfire activity as well. Um, correlation doesn't equal causation with drought and fire, but because we had such an open winter, we didn't have a lot of snowfall. Um, that snowfall usually packs down our grasses, 
because we went in dry in the fall. It was uh, it dried out our grasses. We didn't have that snowpack to put them down, so they're standing all across the state um, and really dry and easily caught if we have a heat source that acts upon it. So very important for all North Dakotans, even if you live in that really fortunate <laughs> part of the, the southeast part of the state, uh, fire prevention on everybody's mind, making sure our activities, uh, recreation outside is doing as much as we can to prevent wildfire. So when we're outside, let's all really try to be as careful, more careful than we've ever been before. Uh, boy, uh, especially if you've got a campfire, we can still have campfires right now. You know, it wasn't too, too many years ago where we had a ban on them. I could see that uh, happening again uh, perhaps after Memorial Day, at least in some parts of the state. So let's be super, would, super careful. Go ahead. Oh, I would definitely check the burn ban in your local area. I know some counties do have a total burn ban, which would uh, prevent people from doing any sort of open burning like a campfire. Okay. Um, that is county by county. So definitely check out the MB Response website to see what the specific restrictions are in your county. There are some that are based on the fire danger that day. Um, there's a map there that shows that too. Um, just trying to guide people on making smart decisions when we're recreating outside. ndresponse.com? .gov. .gov, excuse me. ndresponse.gov. I'm going to look that up while you're talking next year. Yeah, uh, So get us up to date. Beth Hill from the North Dakota Forest Service. What's it like out there? Uh, what are our, give us an update on the fires. Where are they burning? Yes, absolutely. So there are currently two fires that are active in the state. Um, I'm sure you guys talked a lot about it over the weekend. We have the Roosevelt Creek Fire which is going on in Billings County, and we have the Little Swallow Fire, which is out by Mandary. Um, for the Roosevelt Creek Fire in Billings County, we currently have 80% containment and about 4,600 acres burned for that one. And for the Little Swallow Fire near Mandary, we are reporting 75% containment and about 9,800 acres, so quite large fires. Um, we are looking at pretty good containment on those. Um, I think the crews expect to have full containment here in the next couple of days, provided that uh, conditions stay good. Um, as far as total number of fires in the state, uh, that's a kind of an exciting update for us. Uh, the Unified Command for Wildfire in the state uh, is just a bunch of agencies that work to respond to wildfires in North Dakota. We have had a number of different reporting systems. Um, some of those have lags in reporting, and not everyone reports to both of them. So what we had been working on is putting together an internal dashboard for us to get a, a more comprehensive picture for number of fires and acres burned within North Dakota. So we draw from Web EOC, which emergency managers use to report incidences, and then the North Dakota Forest Service emergency reporting system and a couple other methods. So with those things in mind, we are looking at a total of 807 cumulative fires for the year 2021 so far, wow. which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, And we are looking at a cumulative acres burned of 78,329 <sighs> acres. Wow. That's incredible. So you talked, so 78,829 acres have burned so far? 329. 329. 78,329 acres with 807 fires. And how many total fires are burning right now? Just two Those at two. the moment. Okay. So uh, that's incredible. Uh, is this impacting travel for North Dakotans right now? Not to my knowledge right now. I know over the weekend we had a couple other fires that constituted some evacuations of the area or closed down part of Theodore Roosevelt National Park. But to my knowledge, those have opened back up and people are back in their, in their cities. Are you able to get enough help in this situation? you have enough firefighters? Uh, is there a way for... Citizens that are listening to this, if they can help, can they? The best thing that everyday citizens can do is to prevent fire at all costs. Um, I know that a lot of our firefighters, the majority of firefighters in the state are volunteers. And so we really thank uh, their diligence and their willingness to help. Um, in these situations, we have a lot of uh, partners in the state that respond to these type of fires as well, like the North Dakota Forest Service. We have engines and crew that go out and assist the local fire departments when we have uh, large-scale fires happen like the ones that did over the weekend. Um, but really the best thing that people can do is to prevent fires. So we have our volunteer firefighters and other firefighters um, not stretched so thin. Speaking of our firefighters, how, how are they doing? Is there anything we can do to help them? You know, 
when they are responding nonstop to some of these bigger fires, working through the night for multiple days, uh, that definitely takes a toll on them. So uh, with the rain that we received over the weekend, a bit it did help, but uh, again, um, trying to prevent fires as much as possible so that we can ensure that these guys do get a break and do get some rest and relaxation and can recuperate after such a, a busy weekend and possibly uh, a busy future. Beth Hill is the Acting Outreach and Education Manager for North Dakota Forest Service. We're talking about the fires that are burning out in western North Dakota. You talked a little bit about how those two fires are contained to a degree. What percentage would you say they're contained? For the Roosevelt Creek Fire that is burning in Billings County, they're reporting about 80% containment. And for the Little Swallow Fire near Mandaree, they're reporting 75% containment at this time. So that's very, very good news. Uh, do, yes, they, do they definitely. have a, a goal as to when they would be out? Um, I was told the next few days. They're they're optimistic about that. Okay. And I know it's going to take a bit, but I uh, have to ask the question. Do you have any idea how these fires started? I know that they are currently looking for the cause, but at this time I don't have any additional information about that. And, you know, Beth, in, in these conditions, it could be a spark from underneath a truck that drives by. I mean, it could be vert- it could be a lightning strike. It could be anything since it's so dry, right? Exactly. And actually 90% of all wildfires are human-caused. And so, again, just stressing the importance of being aware of what you're doing when you're outside. Like you said, um, a spark is all that it takes, and that can be from driving on dry grass and your hot exhaust pipe just, you know, is enough heat source to start that fire. Uh, Be very smart about not (laughs) discarding uh, cigarette butts into a ditch because the conditions right now, that would be definitely start something real quick. Um, Debris burning too, that was the number one cause of wildfire, human caused wildfire in North Dakota last year in 2020, Mm. as well as so far in 2021. And so being aware of, again, the burn bans in your county, um, any restrictions on that. And then when you do burn, make sure you're burning safely and in a smart way, making sure if you are outside, uh, have a fire extinguisher and a shovel nearby. Um, Just a lot of things that we can keep in the forefront of our minds to prevent wildfire. And I'm on that uh, page right now, the burn ban restriction page. Areas that are in gray have burn bans and restrictions in effect. There are only four counties in North Dakota, and they're all on the eastern side of the state that don't have a burn ban in effect. So there you go. Please keep that in mind wherever you are today, and let's be careful. Let's get these uh, uh, fires under control. You know, and loss of property is one thing, but wouldn't it be awful if someone like one of our firefighters uh, lost their lives or were seriously injured because one of these fires took a, a turn for the worse? So we've got to do whatever we can to keep them under control and keep them from starting up. Acting Outreach and Education Manager Beth Hill from the North Dakota Forest Service. Beth, what a treat to get to talk to you and get to meet you, at least, you know, from a distance today. Thank you so yes. very much. Of course. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. We'll do it again sometime. Sounds good. Thanks, Beth. Have a good evening. KFG Time is coming up on 423. You're listening to The Drive with Dan Michaels on the Mighty 790 and 1047 KFG.